peoples of the worldwide federated internet. What's good? light listening before we start today my guy casting my net dropping some truth yeah god had created man in his own image but they went away from him his spirit is to witness every thought in man's mind was continuously wicked so then from creating man the lord he repented picture our father being grieved in his heart he made men to be together but they'd rather be apart made men to shine like lights but they'd rather be the dark he treated them like tears and he had to wipe them off they would kill everything whether rich whether poor but no found favor in the sight of the all right all right all right, all right. i don't want to give you too much go check my guy out on itunes one word cast in my net um hold on let me let me let me Pull it back up so I can spell it for you so you can get it right. Cast in my net. C-A-S-T-I-N-M-I-N-E-T. The single is called Noah. It's dope. Go check it out. There is a there is a lawsuit that the state of Texas has submitted to the Supreme Court over the election. I'm not going to get into details about that lawsuit. Go look it up. But what that lawsuit made me think about, I don't really want to cover it. Um, it's It's been covered. It's being covered by someone definitely a lot wiser than me when it comes to news items. Uh, a guy I follow by the name of Tim Pool. Go check him out. And I'm sure it's going to be covered by some other respected people. One of the reasons I I listen to Tim Pool is I, I believe he is objective. Many times I I don't agree with him when it comes to his political stance. But what I appreciate about him is whether I agree or disagree, he is always honest when it comes to delivering the news. In spite of whatever his opinion is, he delivers the news. I appreciate that. But anyway, the U.S. Constitution. Let me start out with this. I did a video on my Bible podcast, Brook Nam's World. I believe I titled that video uh, The Great Conspiracy or The Grand Conspiracy, something like that. I can't remember exactly what I titled it. But in that video, I went over... One of the things I went over, I believe in that video, the devil, when he approached Eve in the garden, what did he attack? God's word. Yea, hath God said. When the devil approached the Lord Jesus Christ, what did he attack? God's word. Satan attacks foundations. That's his M.O. In essence, going for the jugular. Because normally people believe their foundations are secure, so they're not really going to focus too much on that foundation. They'll focus on peripheral items. When a lot of Christians get in trouble, venture off into things they have no business being involved in, it's rare that they take a look at how much time am I spending in God's word? Did I violate God's word? What does God's word say about this? That's, that's the, that's the foundation of your beliefs. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay. So this is my political podcast. Where am I going with this? The United States constitution is the bulwark, the framework, 
the foundation, the rock of the pillar of our country in the United States of America. This is the thing by which our country is held together. It is a masterful legal document. It is not the Bible. I do not worship the United States Constitution, nor do I worship my country, uh, uh, nor do I worship its ideals. I worship the most high God of heaven and earth. But I can recognize and thank God for the blessing of the U.S. Constitution. If you attack something at its foundation, you can rip things apart at the seam without people paying attention to what it is you're doing. Think about this. Think about the power or the superpower that the United States is. If we had an enemy which wanted to undo our country at its core, which we have many enemies that that would love to do that, would it be a a, a, um, a, a head on assault? Have you ever stopped to think about that? Would they just invade our shores? Would it be a battle of might or a battle of wits? Which one would it be? There's a, a man I listen to by the name of Michael Savage. He has a show called A Savage Nation. He's a he's an angry gentleman. Um I'm I'm not saying his approach is the approach I particularly prefer. But there is much truth in some of the things he says. It doesn't mean that everything he says is correct. And this is the the benefit of listening to things you don't necessarily agree with. Now, I'm not saying that you, you just go listen to some straight garbage. That's not what I'm saying. But you, you, you have to break away from your echo chamber. Sometimes it's good to hear an opposing viewpoint or a viewpoint that's not necessarily how you see things because you can consider something else that someone else said. But Michael Savage wrote a book. This was years ago. This was, I want to say it was shortly after 9-11. And he talked about this on his uh, nationally syndicated radio show, The Savage Nation. He talked about the enemy within. If I wanted to undo the United States of America and I was another country, of course, I'm not going to do it through military action. That that could turn out to be a war of attrition. That could be very bloody. Um, it, it wouldn't turn out well for anyone. What I would do is I would attack the United States from within. Psychological warfare is a thing. This is. This podcast is not about conspiracy theories, although my viewpoint on conspiracies and conspiracy theories differ from other people in this regard. I understand what a conspiracy is, and I understand that a conspiracy in and of itself is not some kind of, uh, when you say conspiracy to someone discussing information, it's almost as if you have cursed them. There's there's nothing there's nothing crazy about a conspiracy. As a matter of fact, because I've done this on my other podcasts, I'm going to read the definition of conspiracy because I think people need to hear this because we have this negative view of the word as though somehow the word gives you some kind of virus is crazy. The word conspiracy means a combination of men for an evil purpose, an agreement between two or more persons to commit some crime in concert, particularly a combination to commit treason or excite sedition or insurrection against the government of a state, 
a plot as a conspiracy against the life of a king, a conspiracy against the government. In law, an agreement between two or more persons falsely and maliciously to indict or procure to be indicted an innocent person of felony. A concurrence, a general tendency of two or more to cause one event. So in and of itself, there's nothing crazy about conspiracy. These are real things. And people often make light of what people say by calling them conspiracy theorists. That word is almost used to make a person seem like a nut job. Somebody says something and immediately you say, oh, he's a conspiracy theorist. Well, what does that mean? What does that do to that person's credibility? A theory, the definition is a speculation, a doctrine or scheme of things which terminates in speculation or contemplation without a view to practice an exposition of the general principles of any science as the theory of music, the, st the science distinguished from the art as the theory and practice of medicine, the philosophical explanation of phenomena, either physical or moral. So there is nothing inherently crazy about a conspiracy theory. You put certain circumstantial evidence together and you theorize that, oh, this group and this group, it appears may be conspiring to do X. Nothing crazy about that. So I wanted to get that out of the way because of the false perception of conspiracy theories. Many things that are that were said in the past by many people were pretty much discounted, discredited until it comes out that, oh, this is actually a thing. This person is not so crazy after all. All right. I let in with that. By the way, welcome to the thinking. Thank you for joining me. The U.S. Constitution is the solid ground by which the United States stands. If I were to attack the United States, I wouldn't attack its institutions of government. I wouldn't attack its military. I wouldn't even so much attack its ideas per se. But what I would attack is that constitution. That is the framework. That is the groundwork. That is the pillar upon which this house stands. If I want this house to fall, I attack that. So what we've had over the years is a very concentrated and concerted effort to get people to not focus on the U.S. Constitution. Case in point. How many of you listening to me right now who are in the United States? I understand I may have listeners even on my new podcast from other countries. But how many of you within the United States learn much about the U.S. Constitution when you were in high school, when you were in seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade? Now, you might have learned some things about it in passing, as I did. I'm not going to say it was never mentioned. But it definite the importance of the U.S. Constitution was not focused on. Why does that matter? Well, if you don't understand the constitutional process. And this definitely applies to what we have going on right now. If you don't understand the constitutional process, you don't understand how the Constitution works and how it's supposed to work. What happens over time? Well, over time, you get people who become politicians, 
CEOs, people in positions of authority that don't know, hey, you can't actually do this because the U.S. Constitution says X. But they go off and do whatever it is they want to do anyway. This is why I brought up the lawsuit by the state of Texas against I want to say it's Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan, and Wisconsin. And it's it's over this election. They have legitimate gripes. Where that's going to go, where it will end up, how that will end up, I have no idea. But this is what this is what I think. If it ends up how I believe it's possible, it might end up there are many people that are going to be aggravated. There are many people that are going to feel like, like something was done illegally. What these people don't understand is what they are watching is the actual constitution at work. And because they don't know that because they don't read the constitution, because there is no concept understanding of the U S constitution, they think something is going wrong. Well, what would be the purpose of of having people who don't understand, even at a base level, the supreme law of their land? Well, these same people will want to undo the U.S. Constitution. There is a legitimate movement within the United States of America to abolish the U.S. Constitution. Do you know how devastating that would be? I'm not here telling you that this is a religious document. It is not. The Constitution is not the Bible. Understand that. But it is a great legal document. I did not say it is a perfect legal document because I know there are some out there that will hear that word great and automatically attached to that word great perfect and that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is as far as legal documents go the constitution has protected the united states and in my opinion the entire globe from global tyranny for many years i mentioned this in my uh, my podcast the other day what's amazing about that is there's people overseas that understand the U.S. Constitution better than people in the United States of America. That is mind blowing. I listened to um, a segment from Sky News Australia and they were talking about different things and, and as it pertains to the the United States Constitution and they were spot on. And I thought to myself, how is it that this news organization in Australia understands the U.S. Constitution better than reporters who are American citizens? I do not understand that. But I do understand how a calculated enemy works. You don't you don't attack, like I said, head on. You attack a thing at its root. You see, the U.S. Constitution, when it's when it's read, if you read the Declaration of Independence, if you read the preamble to the U.S. Constitution and then you read the U.S. Constitution, it will change the way you think about the United States. If you're objective. If you're objective, you will go in to this thing thinking to yourself, this document is pretty legit. Like there's there's so many safeguards within the U.S. Constitution that if we just apply the U.S. Constitution as it is written, this country will be safe for some years to come. Now, I don't know how long the United States will be around. I'm not I'm not delusional. I'm not one of these these people 
who who believe that the the sun rises and sets based on the United States of America. I am not naive. America could be gone tomorrow. It could be gone the next day. It could be gone a year from now, a year from that, 10 years. I don't know. But the one thing I do know is if we hold and adhere to that constitution, we will be protected for some years to come. And I believe what we are watching right now is a resurgence of people's interest and understanding of the U.S. Constitution. You're going to have to, because as I said, if things play out how it how it is possible to play out, there are many people who are going to be dazed and confused, not understanding what on the planet Earth just happened. And they're going to have to go back to the U.S. Constitution and say to themselves, all right, what happened? What I hope doesn't happen is people watch the constitutional process play out, feel slighted and want to undo the Constitution. I I hope people understand how the Constitution protects all of us from tyranny. Again, I will state this. Just because I don't want people to get this confused. I am not worshiping this document. I'm saying this is our founding document. And if if the Constitution means nothing. Freedom means nothing within the United States. That document is our protection from tyrants who would do whatever they want to do outside of that document. Look at what happened in the state of New York. I remember when this happened. I remember when, when Cuomo, the governor of the state of New York had all of these different, uh, rules and, and, uh, um, state guidelines he came up with. And I remember thinking is, is dangerous as you believe COVID is however dangerous you believe it is. There is no clause in the constitution that allows for the suspension of the bill of rights because of a pandemic. As a matter of fact, you won't find any clause like that anywhere in the constitution. You can't just for whatever reason of your choosing, because you feel it's dangerous suspend rights guaranteed by the bill of rights. You can't legally. You cannot even the layman could read the bill of rights and argue that before the Supreme court, you don't have to be a lawyer for that. Yes. There's some things in the U S constitution that you actually have to sit down and kind of parse out like, man, okay, what are they talking about here? Let me, let me break this down. I'm not saying everything is simple and I'm not saying I understand everything in it, but there are core things in the U S constitution that I do understand. And I believe they were purposely written for the layman to understand. But if our enemies can get us to nullify that document, if our enemies can get us to diminish and demean that document, It will be oh so easy for those same enemies to come in through the front door without a shot ever being fired. Again, I believe this is the purpose. I believe this is what our enemies desire. This is what they want. They want maximum destruction to us with little to no effect to them. And the easiest way to do that is to get people to view the constitution as a scourge instead of viewing the constitution rightfully. So as it is our shield against tyranny, I wish more people would take the time out to at least Read one portion of the U.S. Constitution. I did a video on my other podcast on the U.S. Constitution, which I I might post 
on on this channel, reposted on this channel, where I just I simply went over the preamble. If you read the preamble to the Constitution, that gives you a framework to understand the Constitution. There's many assumptions made about the Constitution that could easily be dispelled by reading the preamble. Y'all know what it is. Stay frosty, people.